Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to episode one of the Brian Divisions Interviews Artist Shows. Because right now we don't have a name. <laughs> but really this is this is the Divine Visions podcast the divine visions artist podcast uh, that sounds cool that's a good yeah i like that that's a good working title right yeah. so today i'm interviewing my buddy mark you so this is going to be the first of what is probably going to be many many interviews and many of these types of video casts to come because uh, really we've got this opportunity here with positive artists to to just help showcase who we actually really are why we make music what our focus is, you know, what our, our point of view is on this earth. And, you know, to be able to share that with others is essential. Communication is everything in life. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that you, my friend, <laughs> have, have brought this idea. You saw, you know, you saw that this was a, a good move and you're like, yo, we got to do this. We got to do this vlog. So yeah, man, without further like ado, <laughs> mark you, everybody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Peace and love. <laughs> Yeah, man, it just seemed like a good idea. <laughs> Why not have yeah. these conversations and share them with people? Um, allow them to challenge us and even expand further on them, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. So um, for you guys, um, Mark Yu, uh, I met I met this dude through a, a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. She she knew both of us and was like, you guys got to meet. You guys got to meet, link up. And like, you guys are going to create something cool. So the first time we got to meet, he was actually coming in town to Asheville and it was the perfect timing. I actually was, uh, I had a show on the 7th of December and Mark was in town. So Mark jumped in and got to do a set and it was awesome. Like everyone loved him. But Mark, tell us, <laughs> tell us about who you are, like who you are, where you're from, mm -hmm. why you do music, you know, just you. Mm. Well, um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, um, East Flatbush to be a uh, specific and I am a human being um, that's always searching, trying to find, exploring, curious, um, trying to access more information as much as possible, yeah. but also trying to balance that out with relaxation, staying within myself, all those yeah. typical uh, <laughs> spiritual enlightening things. That's, that's it, though. Um, I do music because... Uh, Personally, it's therapeutic for me. Uh, it allows me to heal and express myself in ways that I can't usually do with other things in everyday life. Um, and then my uh, next step in releasing it is to hopefully heal others, uh, allow them to challenge me again and and add and expand the thoughts that I have on yes. these tracks that I make. So, yeah, yes, that's my purpose for making music. Oh, <laughs> man, it feels so good to hear you say that, man. Yeah, <laughs> because that is the. You know, to be able to be, to be aware that yes, yes, let's keep learning, let's keep growing, but also be balanced in our integration of that yeah. knowledge and to not wear ourselves out. Mm -hmm. To have that awareness, I think is, it's uh, it's f it's funny because it's everything, but it's also it's not that exciting, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I want to keep going and going mm -hmm. and going on. Mm -hmm. But what if what if? spirituality mm -hmm. is just a balancing act right yeah 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 so to see Absolutely. that that's your to see that you are balanced and grounded from that point of view yeah is is awesome uh, dude. thank you you know you. and then to see you know why you do music and to be able to see yes the personal ability to create and to express mm -hmm. but also the higher meaning of being able to reach other people and help them heal mm -hmm. through sound mm -hmm. you know so that that's really why we're here yeah you know what i mean that's how we linked <laughs> up yeah. that's how we're in this room right now doing this this show because that that energy there uh to be able to have this purpose mm -hmm. to help other people mm -hmm. through such like a such a, a cool way because yeah. sound is really like everything mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so uh tell me about what what your um your journey of of like, what intrigues you about consciousness? Mm. Just, you know, because consciousness is... Yeah, consciousness open, is, open is vast. It's, uh, it's limitless. You know, consciousness is really being aware and open, I think, to information. And people uh, put the connotation of consciousness around spiritual things and new age information, etc. But, I mean, consciousness is 
being uh, aware of sound equipment you know consciousness is it, it depends on what it is you know there's a lot of things that you and i aren't conscious to even though we're probably consciousness to like 11 11 and like certain spiritual right, terms right. you know but uh yeah that's i i it started for me at 15 years old being a young black man in america trying to figure out my identity and how i fit into this space and like yeah. going out into the world as a young man experiencing it for myself for the first time and having these racial elements projected onto me by people in my community, outside of my community. And mm. that started this progression of like nonstop reading and inf information seeking, trying to make sense of my reality, my yeah. particular reality, me, Mark you, Mark Oboma. Um, and then expanding that into the world, like my reality isn't the only reality, you know, like my black male mm -hmm. experience isn't the only form of human experience, you know? Oh, yeah. And then once you get to that place where I guess you're comfortable within the information that you've gathered as an individual within yourself and then spiritually, you start to expand and you realize how everything kind of interacts and intersects. Like even like understanding that sound equipment is mm -hmm. essential like to the consciousness of like yoga or <laughs> your meditation. Like it all kind of intersects in, in some in minimal ways, of course, but they all play a part in like the the harmony of the world you know yeah. so that's what consciousness is for me yeah yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> oh that's beautiful man yeah yeah just the the journey that we go on mm -hmm. and it, it's always like you, as soon as you said infinite and like you know what are we not conscious of mm -hmm. i immediately was like well i'm not conscious of like you know how to change an engine in a yeah. 86 <laughs> trans yeah. am yeah but that may like could alter your entire life one day like your car yeah, breaks down etc and then somebody who is conscious of it can you know interject all, and all these different worlds mm -hmm. and then some of these things are just human things mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. just like man-made <laughs> things you know like cars and like the systems you know the sound equipment not necessarily the sound but mm -hmm. yeah the equipment and the machines and mm -hmm. like you know and then we when you know we think about you know consciousness being like okay how can we be aware of like the nature uh -huh. and the stuff that was here before mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. in our, like you're saying, your identity, mm -hmm. expanding our identity to a, um, a whole planetary consciousness exactly. or a whole exactly. cosmic galactic exactly. consciousness, you know, being able to see those things and like, oh my God, this is all here. Yeah. <laughs> Not just, you know, I have to drive and you know, mm -hmm. go to work and I'm stuck in the car mm -hmm. and you yeah. know, like everything's happening, but just like what, this earth actually is yeah. and and it's related to oneness i guess too because i saw myself as this particular thing in the world and then once i saw that i didn't have to relate it to being this category or identity that was placed on me like it started to expand like oh, i was more than just this kid from brooklyn or this kid that makes music or like basketball or whatever like it, i'm i'm a part of it all you know like depending on what i choose yeah. to focus my energy towards you know yeah yeah so uh we were we were briefly talking earlier yeah. about this and we we're like man we got it we got to save this off-camera stuff off-camera yeah. shit yeah we got to <laughs> save this for the podcast man like this is getting deep and yeah. heavy but we we're we we're talking about um you know kind of initially getting uh kind of going through an awakening a spiritual awakening the early stages of you know, fear and loss of right, loss of personal identity. And as mm -hmm. far as, uh, you know, like for me, you know, different breakthroughs as far as uh, belief systems of mm -hmm. governance mm -hmm. and of, you know, like uh, religion and stuff I learned in school and yeah. all these things kind of escalated and kind of came crashing down. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've gone through these phases of like uh, a fear of an objective reality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then a transition into more of an acceptance of mm -hmm. realizing that all is one mm -hmm. and there is no objective mm -hmm. foe mm -hmm. out there <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's looking to like take us down mm -hmm. really everything that is not working in our life yeah. is actually our own responsibility mm -hmm. it is a manifestation of an energy mm -hmm. uh conflict half mm -hmm. the time in our in our soul's expression mm -hmm. in this human form yeah yeah <laughs> so i know that was a that was a lot the story of, <laughs> of <sighs> destruction back to life mm -hmm. and, and the awareness of oneness but just um yeah tell me more about you know your initial entry into this whole you know awakening of your own consciousness <laughs> bring, it back, bring it back 
That's what we want. That's what we're here for. Yeah, this is ladies like, and gentlemen. <laughs> I have to like reflect stories. deep on that one. Um, my initial initial awakening to consciousness. Uh, or at least, you know, the first, the process. Because maybe not one exact, say, like date and time event, yeah. but just the series. It's usually, you know, a series yeah. of moments and experiences. I'll reflect on uh, one particular moment in my life that always uh, comes back to me. Um, my father has been a, a touring, working, um, successful ska musician um, for the last 30 plus years. And he's traveled the world with it. And one summer, actually, no, it was for my birthday. It was for my 10th birthday. Um, he had a show in Venezuela. And I was fortunate enough to go with him on that trip. And I saw some extreme poverty. I mean, it made the projects in America look like a rich estate. And even at that tender age, I was still like blown away and, and aware of like the the disparity and yeah. <laughs> the huge contrast in uh, wealth. And mm-hmm. these were some of the happiest people I ever met in my entire life. I mean, they didn't have much, but they gave all, you know, and not just physically, but like in their spirit and their emotions, their happiness, their joy, you know, they were still present to life's beauty. And I couldn't quite frame it and articulate it the way I am now, of course, but I felt it, you know, it was that human commonality of, yeah. of the sharing, the experience in the moment. And my life was forever changed in that moment. I didn't know it at the time, but something mm. dawned on me and that was starting to develop. And I saw the oneness of people, like I didn't speak Spanish, like I, I, didn't, I wasn't mm. familiar with the language that time. Um, I knew a few words, but me and these kids, we still found like joy. Like we just loved running around, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was opening myself up to a new culture in that moment. Uh, different ways of living, food, culture, yeah. all like that holistic experience. The day to day. And it, it opened different. me up to like people. And that's what true consciousness is, you know, like mm-hmm. people, like uh, the breath of life, you know, like the breathing mm-hmm. scrolls, as they say. And. That was, I feel like, what got the ball rolling for me. And then going to my father's shows as well. Like, I'm from the hood in in Brooklyn, and it's predominantly black people. And then he's doing these ska shows, which is a (laughs) mixture of punk rock and reggae. And (laughs) I'm at these shows, and it's just a bunch of white kids, you know, like, (laughs) and skateboards and, like, vans. And this is, like, the mid to late 90s, and I was wearing my Jordans. (laughs) And I got hip to vans before anybody, like, where I was from was really hip to them, you know? And I'm like learning how to skateboard culture. and yep. I'm watching these white kids worship my dad, like this black man, you know, Killing <laughs> and, it. Yeah, and Killing I would go it. home and my friends back home would help me reflect. They're like, yo, Mark, what'd you do during the summer? I'm like, shit, how the fuck do I explain like <laughs> <laughs> painted black nails and spiked hips and, and <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> you know, mosh uh, pits and, yeah, like and crowd videos. surfing, you know, and I was like, yo, I mean... I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't know what to say, but I'm like, in my head, I'm starting to like make yeah. sense of this reality and like the spirit of things, not just like the exterior of things, because that's what we're taught, like just the exterior, the yeah. surface, the presentation, the packaging, like what someone looks like and who they're associated with. Like just a, a, Yeah. It's presented like exactly. a, almost like, like a this, disconnection, this like a rank and file judgment. mentality, you know, and mm-hmm. it's like I independent thought started to like really pick up in my mm-hmm. mind there and because i had to process these two worlds and that's where i could oh, say oh that's awesome mm-hmm, consciousness and how old began. were you when, when you went there <sighs> to venezuela i was nine ten. Oh, that's awesome i started going yeah. to these shows when i was about four or five. Oh, that's awesome yeah. but man. it was that one trip that really like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah it shows you mm-hmm. shows you everything mm-hmm. that's amazing because yeah. you know i was telling you earlier it was just this year that I went out of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First yeah. time. And, you Great know. pictures. <laughs> be, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where we flashed some, some photos, <laughs> like, right, like, right here. And, like, right over, right over there. That's going to be fun to edit later. <laughs> but, yeah, man, like, yeah. the, the. Uh, perception shift mm-hmm. when you know you're in a different world and everything is done differently mm-hmm. um it made it man it made me feel so good like one of those kind of things where like you know when you're aware everybody's one mm-hmm. 
there is a level of knowledge, just like with everything else. There's a level of like, oh, I know that that's real. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a level of deep, almost like beyond belief, mm -hmm. but just a, a knowing and a feeling and mm -hmm. a sense of knowing. Yeah. And yeah. like, you know, I, I you know, I'd, I'd never see like an end game in life mm -hmm. and I always see it a constant ability to deepen that being mm -hmm. in that state of awareness. But I got a lot closer to like not only just believing it in my heart, but yeah. just like really seeing it, feeling it, especially as I was, you know, using what little of the language I did know yeah. to communicate and to want to communicate yeah. to these people that are, you know, they're living their normal day to day life yeah. and I'm showing up in their neighborhood yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I know like two sentences and I'm yeah. just trying to get like as close as I can yeah. <laughs> and trying to like, <laughs> dude, like, it, it was it was mind blowing. Yeah. And then to see also too the yeah. tell the people exactly where you went to. Oh yeah, Tulum. Yeah. Tulum, Mexico. <laughs> but man, there was a I could see the gentrification really wow. coming in. It's expanded that far. Well wow. Yeah, man, because there's a lot of international money that mm -hmm. that really is coming in. So mm -hmm. there there will be a nice condo mm -hmm. like you know four or five rooms or can fit twenty people, mm -hmm. uh, and then right across the street. There's a home without, you know, a whole side of the house. Yeah. And it's like, cr it's pretty crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, to, you know, to think someone just, you know, bought that land, yeah. developed this whole thing, and they're yeah. just running like, you know, making bank on Airbnb. Yeah. And then someone across the street is just probably going around town just hustling, Everyone's you know. Scrapping. Everybody was hustling, though. Yeah. It was awesome. But, yeah, just to, just getting by. Yeah. And it was like right across the street. And it was like wow. all over the place. So the, the place there is changing a lot, yeah. you know, and yeah. and to see that happen and realize, you know, going to these little neighborhood shops and seeing yeah. the actual, like, the culture there. And I mean, it's like, it's hard to even talk about unless you don't go, mm -hmm. you know, like, I haven't been to Venezuela, mm -hmm. but, you know, here, you know, on Steam It, there's a buddy I have from Venezuela. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, Steam is really helping him yeah, yeah. because the, the situation in that country, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. with, you know, the issues with their currency. But it's 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 amazing, man, because we really are connected mm -hmm. through this this heart, mm -hmm. you know, like we're all all those people there are just maybe they haven't gotten, you know, the people that you might remember seeing like the happy yeah. ones. Yeah. They didn't get so, you know, taken aside by all this materialism mm -hmm. that we're kind of forced to deal with here. I guess it's the uh, glass half them half empty half full theory perspective you know like accepting or embracing or looking at focusing on what it is that you have and what is it, not what you're lacking or what you want to have or what you yearn and long for you know mm -hmm. so seeing and being present like oh look at my mother's here like my cousin's here my sister's here my, my father's here like we have some food like we're eating together like we're all here like you know like <laughs> not like yeah. this car this house this uh I didn't get this job. I mean, sometimes that's essential, of course, for living, mm -hmm. et cetera. But like, what is here is, you know, some it's beautiful. It's something to be appreciated. Relationship, mm -hmm. <laughs> family, and friends. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's really all mm -hmm. that matters. Yeah, truly, that's family, what friends, the most. and your personal health. Mm -hmm. And then you know what I mean. Other the things than that, that all preserve that you stuff on the daily. Yeah, all the other stuff's bonus stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. bonus stuff. The cherry. <laughs> yeah, bro, man. So. Seeing, you know, seeing your perspective, you know, on that is seeing, you know, just that shift that you went through and just started to open you up. Yeah, that's that's really cool to see because, uh, you know, especially being like nine, yeah. ten, yeah. <laughs> going into middle school mm -hmm. and now starting to think about things differently, mm -hmm. thinking about your own environment mm -hmm. differently. Mm -hmm. That's definitely probably set you on that path. Yeah, it was early. Like these experiences really shaped me as well. But. My father was a, uh, and still is, he's like, uh, if anybody's seen uh, Boys in the Hood, he's like Furious Styles, <laughs> you know, the father, Trey's father in the movie. Yeah. Like really intense and, and focused on the development of my mind and my spirit and how it relates to the world. And I think part of it, too, was he was afraid that the world would grab me, you know, like I would fall into the same systematic kind of cultural yeah. lack of resource plagues that young black men and women go through and it was like i need to make sure that he has an understanding of self because that's your greatest that's weapon essentially awesome. you know like you can there's so many tools that we have 
um, access to externally and as far mm -hmm. as information and education, et cetera, you know, worker bees. But the greatest tool you have is like who you are, knowing who you are as a person. Yes. An app, from there, that's your, the working point from there is. Yeah. You have your perspective. It's transformative. Yeah, you, know? you like have you, you. When you. When you know yourself, it's mm -hmm. cliche. A lot of people say that, but it's. It has so much merit to it, you know. Man, that's that's cool that he was uh, instilling <laughs> yeah. that in you. It, it was annoying. At, at yeah, <laughs> like, right, I man, wanted, I gotta, I gotta be aware, man. Yeah. I gotta know, like, <laughs> I want to play video games and like just do regular kid stuff, you yeah. know. Like, I I would go to him on the weekends, and I'm like, I'm ready to go play. Like, I remember one time my cousin came over, yeah. brought his Xbox, and he made us write a book report on this like Wayne Dyer book. <laughs> you what? <know? laughs> Yeah, and my cousin was looking at me like, "Yo, what the fuck?" <laughs> I'm like, "That is awesome." I'm like, "This guy is crazy," you know. <laughs> but then I look back at it now. I'm like, "Shit," you know. Like, he shifted me in ways that you know, he really set the tone for me in life. And yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm super grateful for it. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. man. <laughs> so okay, so tell tell us the f the first, or maybe not the first, but the most strong held like principle that he instilled in you at a young age where you're like, all right, man, I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> like, all right, I get it. Now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would be, uh, the power of thought. Um, <laughs> I'm a little ashamed to tell this story, but I remember like one time I was like seven or eight. And, uh, I'm like, Shit, I gotta use the bathroom, man. Like, couldn't hold it type stuff. <laughs> this is a deuce. I'm, I'm keeping it a hundred. <laughs> yeah. We 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 all know who that is. <laughs> He's the, like, you the clock is it. running you out. You gotta hold it. You gotta hold it. <laughs> and I'm like, squirming, but it's just like, you could it could be considered torture of a kid, or it can be considered like, kind of like calming yourself in that moment and like being <laughs> present to like. Breathe, not letting son. your mind overrun because a lot of times it's like react your mind just yeah you're just like oh i need to, i feel it and i just go with it you know yeah. like, then it's just centering yourself and then he would always say thought plus conviction equals manifestation like this was the saying that he had i'm like <laughs> i'm seven years old i'm like what the fuck what? i'm like, <laughs> oh my I'm like God. okay whatever you know but he's saying this to me in the moment and i'm like damn that is it so didn't really dope. like what was it Manifest. thought plus <laughs> conviction equals manifestation thought plus conviction equals manifestation that is awesome he's been saying this my entire life it didn't really set itself in motion in my life until i was a lot older but it was just like this was the foundations that he was laying <laughs> that is that is so That's sick crazy, and now you're like duh <laughs> yeah now <laughs> i mean it's like in practice it's been in practice for a while well yeah it it's like is. second nature now but yeah but yeah. you're like Damn, he's on his he's on his ball, man. He's on his game yeah, right Yeah, I mean, there. I thought this guy was insane. Yeah. You know? Insane. Nice, man. <laughs> and maybe some things were extreme, but I understand, like, the uh, intent. Yeah. And, yeah. It man, was, yeah, it was because, <laughs> the, the you know, the systems of the world are, mm -hmm. you know, designed to just take your energy. Mm -hmm. Whether it, that's a conscious, deceitful thing or whether yeah. it's just a byproduct mm -hmm of reactions to consciously deceitful <laughs> stuff that other people see. And they're like, well, that works in this world. So let me do that too. Yeah. But you know, to be, to be armed with that awareness mm -hmm. of like, watch, watch out, man. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure, you know, you, you got to see your friends who didn't have necessarily that same I did. perspective. I did. You know what I mean? Go through and, and not be able to make that, that, that decision, mm -hmm. you know, cause I, I really believe that our, our lives, you know, we manifest so much in our lives through the choices and the decisions mm -hmm. we make. You know what I mean? And you know, we we we, we could we can all look back and see like certain moments mm -hmm. where really where we made that decision where that mm -hmm. really like Pivotal altered time. us. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, kind of tell me about when you like made that real decision to be an artist and. Like mm -hmm. when I when I say not just like, oh, I, I think it'd be fun, but like, no, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish this project. I'm going to put it out. I'm going to tell people about it and I'm going to keep going because that's that's my perception. Like when I want to check you out, I'm yeah. like, OK, you've been working. Yeah. <laughs> and like you, you I feel like you, you know, you pass that stage where a lot of people give up. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, it take you can't put out one thing and be yeah. like, 
all right man yeah it where's my <laughs> fame and my significance yeah, and my yeah. money bro you I know i think um i always played around with it um rapping in the lunchroom mm-hmm. um my cousin rapped a lot like he was really passionate about it and he would like make me write with him and then I kind of picked it up a bit and enjoyed it, like as a hobby, just playing around with it. I, basketball was like my true passion. Plus, I was around music so much that I kind of got a disdain for it because it always brought my dad on the road, and I saw like how much wow. work he had to do. Like it wasn't like the internet sending an email. Like this is the '90s where you had to be on the <laughs> phone all the time. He had a th- he had a thick black book planner that he had to, <laughs> you know, like so it just wow. looked like a real task. Um, then I experienced some some heartbreak and relationships and lived a little bit and some emotional opening if you will mm-hmm. and i just started to really take to it because it was therapeutic but as far as like meeting it on the business end where i'm sharing it with the world and trying mm-hmm. to make a living off of it that started 2013 when i released my first project of demos that i did um some recordings that i did in london some in brooklyn um and i went through a few meeting process uh, sorry, I went through the meeting process with uh, a few labels and I was really turned off, but I was also like invigorated at the same time because mm-hmm. I heard some really some crazy shit. Just just like wild, like, wow, they really like, well, it's like not, per- perspectives of like or like yeah, what they do. Like I remember one time. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll story. Number some, two. I won't say you're from who because you never know. I may do. Right, I, right. I, I won't even. <laughs> but I remember I heard shit like, why do you have so much respect for women? And I'm like, huh? Like, it didn't even <laughs> register when I heard that. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was so a I wrote question a, they asked Because <laughs> it was a song about, like, my mother. <laughs> yeah. And then I heard another thing like, oh, man, you sing, you rap. Like, your dark skin could cut your hair. You could be, like, the dark skin version of Drake. And I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> These yeah, are like the marketing to, pitches, and then they're it was trying like, to mold you. You're bro. like, oh, you like, you got that Caribbean dreadlock. We can make you like a new age Bob Marley. I'm like, I would hate that shit. Like, if I saw that on someone, I was like, <laughs> you know, trying, yeah, trying to like, you know, and then even on the financial his... end, it's like taking half of everything, even more than that at that time, because I didn't have that much leverage. You know, mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, they like the songs. Like, okay, let's bring this kid and give him a development developmental deal and. But uh, after that, I was just like, I got some real good feedback from like people that were in the industry, like people that worked on like Lauryn Hill's album and producers that like did like work that I enjoyed that influenced and inspired me. And I was like, okay, I'm making good music. Like people are appreciated. Like that was like a confirmation mm -hmm. of like, like, whoa, you know, I'm doing the right thing artistically. So let me figure myself out, like truly secure my identity in the space of like sharing yourself with the world. Cause like I create Mm -hmm. from a space of like, true feelings and emotion like i'm not trying to put on like i can't do that you know i I remember like my first shows it was difficult for me to perform like become this thing it's easier now that i've become more used to it but i was like okay i'm creating from this space where i'm incubating and trying to access these (laughs) raw emotions so let me just chill out and like write some more songs and just go through that process yeah yeah i I released a project called so odyssey in 2013 and that's when I started making my way into it. And then I took some breaks in between. And I'd say 2015 is when it really clicked. Like, okay, like, mm. I'm going to give this all that I've got. and Yeah. Yeah, not look back. No, unattached to the outcome, but still focused in like making it. it something, making it whatever it can be, you know. The limitless. intent, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Long story long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's 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 awesome to ride yeah. through it, man. Mm-hmm. Being able to merge that awareness too, and and those of those feelings, mm-hmm. is uh that's 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 crazy, man. To think that you're in that position with that label, yeah. <laughs> you're, it, dude. Because I always have, I always try to remember how it materialized for me. You know, it wasn't like some childhood dream that I was searching for, and I didn't want to disrespect like the integrity of why I started doing it and why and what yeah. it does for me. You know, so it was an easier decision from that standpoint of like, okay, like this is, I have a purpose for this, you know, like I, it's not like a get rich quick scheme. Right. It's like, I just want to express myself and like from there, let the chips fall where they may, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking of your music more yeah. in your perspective mm-hmm. of all the songs that you've, you've released so far, what's your favorite? Oh, I see. Yeah. My heart knows. 
Oh, uh, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. That's my absolute favorite song. The, oh, yeah, that one's yeah. dope, man. Yeah, especially, dude, um, I, I'm glad you got to see that footage <laughs> of Jenny putting a uh, putting that together in her yeah. yoga video. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. So my girlfriend's making a, a whole uh, yoga training video, and she's picked, like, five songs throughout her routine. This is, like, her first one doing it, so this is pretty cool. Yeah. So My Heart Knows by Mark Yu is in there. And it's 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 smooth. It's like perfect, you know. And then you. you got the the background with uh, the Tulum, Mexico beach, and these <laughs> pelicans <laughs> flying in the background. The and visuals. it's like, <laughs> man, it's it's perfect. Yeah. But yeah, uh, when you when you were talking about what that label executive was saying <laughs> about like, you know, so why you know why do you care so much about women? <laughs> that you know that opens a huge uh, a huge door. And uh, just more of my own awareness of mm-hmm. kind of what goes beyond the scene, behind the scenes of the kind of, I, w- I would say it's the manipulation of an artist who mm-hmm. usually comes in with, you know, this pure intent, like, yeah, man, I want to like do all this cool stuff and mm-hmm. be me and just express. And, and then you're told to be this like shapeshifter or do something different. And this was in uh, 2010. So it absolutely wasn't the status quo like we are in now or. It wasn't as progressive. Like we have the Me Too movement and mm-hmm. Time's Up and, and women are actually declaring and people are listening. Um, so it was like open and free and accepting and people were endorsing, you know, these songs that didn't quite fully agree with like respecting women or like songs that were even just from <laughs> any form of like, yeah, I guess that moral direction. Um and for me, it was just natural. I grew up in a house full of women, four women, you know, like I didn't live with my dad. My parents separated before I was even born. They, they conceived me and then they went away their mm-hmm. different ways. So I spent most of my time with my grandmother, my two aunts and my mother. And I saw the strength of a woman every day. And the, it was just like in, innate. It wasn't even like I was trying to be deliberate or like try to like grasp the female demographic. It was just like <laughs> something I did yeah. naturally, you know, like it was just what I was inclined to do. And so when I heard yeah. it, I was like, what? Like there's certain things that I I won't I wouldn't even that I can't say that I try to hold back from at certain times because I'm like oh my mother's gonna hear this and I'm like you know, yeah she's supposed yeah. to play for friends shit like that but um that's, I yeah, mean I've since let go of that because like mom I gotta talk my shit but <laughs> <laughs> gotta be real <laughs> yeah gotta but, um, be me yeah it was a, it was a yeah when I heard that I was like what the fuck man like <laughs> like that's what I was like I couldn't like he saw it on my face too like I couldn't even like fake that one I was yeah. like what and then it, it got even worse when he was like, the image changed, like the, the dark skin version of Drake. This is when Drake was like really heating up, like oh, when yeah. it just came out. And they were like comparing me, and like they had like this chart vision board, like you can be this. And like, oh was, like, man, selling like, you you're, in these you're, dreams. like, yeah, it's like a video game you're about to join in. What yeah. character do you want to be? And it was like, I'm not going to fall victim to like this shallow, like you could have, you could be, <laughs> you know? Oh man. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't, dude. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, there was a lot of development you, that happened in that time period, you know, artistically. Yeah, especially, like, what we were kind of talking about, <clears throat> you know, off camera, just being independent artists. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's a whole different reality mm-hmm. than, say, being signed by a label. Mm-hmm. And then they essentially build build you, mm-hmm. market you mm-hmm. to the demographic that they feel like mm-hmm. you'll fit in. It's a machine. It's uh, Yeah. It's a crafted particularly crafted for a particular reason in a, in a particular direction and even if it's not of your nature or mm-hmm. of who you are like you're formed in your like <laughs> chamber if you will yeah and it's like when it's you look crazy. at the you know the people who are signing most of the artists yeah especially like hip-hop yeah um especially recently uh it's just very clear that there are certain belief systems that uh, they must project mm-hmm. through these artists. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, what I mean, as far as misogyny, as mm-hmm. far as gun violence, and even if there isn't any manufacturing on the part, they're picking a particular artist that they can put in a particular direction, and I mean, it's all curated, you know, like the payola paying for spins, etc. So they p- pick another artist that can fit mm-hmm. right into the slot and keeping the machine going. Um, I mean, I have no critique of it now because technology is now 
allowing artists to be more transparent. So you do have some artists that are in yeah. the mainstream that are allowed to be themselves and have their own unique message and style. And then independent artists cannot flourish in a similar yeah. way. So it's like it, it was the right decision for me, and like it's it's a lot more open now. So it's it's exciting ex- an exciting time to be a, an artist. Nice, if you bro. use the tools to your advantage, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Or With to the your, internet, to your, to your nature, to your yeah, nature. man, and in this day and age too, like you were saying, your dad had to have that the binder with <laughs> all the different, the yeah. st- all the contact info and the calls, and now all the like osmosis and like just working and, and going mm. on tour, like really like it, going on tour was essential. Like you couldn't upload a video and yeah. you have a thousand streams and then it spirals into more. Like you man, I I bet those audiences circuit. though. Yeah. That's the thing, though. It's yeah, like they were more you're, present and tapped you're, in. You're very, yeah, you're very mm-hmm. true. Like you don't. That's the thing. You don't have to tour yeah. nowadays to be a musician. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, I know that there's a lot of plenty of musicians that don't have the uh, opportunity to tour, even if the you know, like they have a million fans. Mm-hmm. You know, you might be raising a young child and mm-hmm. living that life. You mm-hmm. might it might not be your thing. Mm-hmm. But when you go back, like you're saying, <laughs> you know, '90s and stuff, you had a tour and. Yeah. You know, that's one of the biggest elements that pulled me into music yeah. is the live show experience yeah. and and just sharing music with people yeah. and being on either end of that. Yeah, being able to touch an artist and, and be present with them for an hour or two, it's transformative. You know, you get to feel it. The music yeah. that you're listening to comes to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, for me, like, uh, I will just kind of zone out go into this like kind of this new state yeah where especially you know especially when it's music i really enjoy yeah but where just you know that you just kind of enter your subconscious and you'll have those thoughts that kind of connect and you start piecing things together and i'm like i'm not even trying to think about anything <laughs> but it's just like oh yeah you remember that one time and like that's why this happened and it's like oh this is what you should do in this and i'm like whoa yeah but it's that power of just being there and letting the music flow through your body, allowing your cells to move, mm-hmm. you know, and allowing some energy to yeah. actually reach other cells. And yeah. It's intuitive, you know. You just yeah. do what, what, it, what makes you feel. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. So what is what are your plans uh, music-wise now? Like, you have any, anything that you're working on now? I am. Um, I'm finishing up an album. Um hopefully to be done in the next month. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to release it, but we have some videos on the way. Um, probably going to release a few songs before the actual release of the album. Yeah. I've been touring over the last six months, doing spot shows here and there, then a few consecutive shows. Um, did some sh- a show here in Asheville. <laughs> it's in Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, did a few shows in Denver. Um in uh, San Antonio, Austin. Uh, I can't remember any more right now. <laughs> that's that's dope. And I have dude. some more coming up. Um, yeah. One in Oakland that I'm trying to confirm right now. Um, yeah, just doing a bunch of shows. Mm, that's uh, perfect. Just exploring different cities as well. Yeah. yeah. Meeting up with other musicians, connecting, building. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. in this, <laughs> kind of in the same vein yeah, yeah. as your dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. You <laughs> got to see the you got to see the opportunity of being able to travel and mm-hmm. see these, like you know, what I mean, yeah. new venues, new cities, yeah. new people, new yeah. new uh, new stage, yeah. new lights, like all this. The entire process of, of making music and then even moving forward in the business aspect was second nature to me, and I didn't realize it at first <laughs> like i forgot like all the experiences that i had wow. because i was so removed from it because i wasn't fully engaged all the time because it was just like what my dad did you know it's like okay this is his job you know like any yeah. other job that your parents have you know like <laughs> that that was my world so i didn't really think about it in depth until i was like oh do you have that scrapbook that black book that you had like i want to see how you organize like your contacts like the booking agents wow the, uh, yeah promoters etc and then it's like got the ball rolling for me like just having that reference point yeah man well we we've gone through some uh a lot of subjects tonight i feel like we have some more time before (laughs) but uh do you have something that you can share with us later you know i mean you want to spit something (laughs) yeah you know some music all right i'll let you man all right i'll let you i'll let you think about what it is but um i I wanted to ask you kind of take a a a different dive kind of back to more consciousness Mm -hmm. okay let me ask you this as far as um have you ever experienced any altered states of awareness 
Do you have any experiences with any th- any of the above? <laughs> Psychedelics, aliens, <laughs> UFOs, or transcendental meditation? Mm. Any anything that, or even anything paranormal? Any experiences with ghosts, other entities? Anything that was just like I do. reality <laughs> is what? <laughs> <laughs> um uh psychedelics no um so many friends have told me to try ayahuasca peyote shit like that i'm good <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of weed herb is good for me um here and there um i feel like you know that black man experience is thrilling enough. It's the it's the <laughs> highest of highs, man. <laughs> Shit, like t- try that fucking drug, okay? Um, um, yeah, we need some to, we need to quote that <laughs> and put it like you know on the nice like Pinterest board somewhere. <laughs> But it, it, it'll be in like that nice, yeah. you know, that Whole Foods quote yeah. or in the Whole Foods <laughs> font that like every company uses, <laughs> but Whole Foods got it unlocked because they did it yeah. first. Yeah. Anyways, go <laughs> um, I'm on a tangent. No. All good, man. All good. <laughs> uh, nothing with UFOs, nothing with aliens. Um, transcendental med- meditation. Um, maybe. Um, I've had some experiences when I was... Uh, up in, in between those power hours, as the ancients say, between that 3 a.m., mm. 2 a.m., 3 a, 4 a.m. period where yeah, you know, the, the night is kind of still, the morning dew. Um, but yeah, I've had real experiences with um, ghosts, clairvoyant experiences. See, I knew we'd get one. <laughs> Story number um, three. <laughs> my, my dad had this picture of um, my great-grandfather on his wall all the time that I always see. And he would always talk about him like with such passion of, uh, and these quotes that he had and this like great Jamaican man. (laughs) And that picture always just like felt a particular way to me. Like like it had this intensity, like he was just in this top hat and this suit and he was just like very regal. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day I was, I walked into my apartment. I was living in Harlem at the time. And I had this love seat, like you would you you enter the door in my apartment and you turn right and like the first thing you see is this love seat. And mm. one time I came home and I turned in and I saw him sitting there in the couch <laughs> straight faced. And I was like, nah, get the fuck out of here. So I come out like some like movie type shit, like I had to do a second take. Yeah. And I go back in and he's still sitting there. So what? Like, what the fuck? In that suit? Yeah, in, that in the suit. same outfit. And I was like, I left. I went to my dad's house. I was like, I'm not going <laughs> Looking in Looking regal as hell. <laughs> and my dad is like very spiritually in tune, man, and like very focused on his internal state and like the spiritual workings of it. And he, he like mm-hmm. meditates like habitually between the hours of like 3 to 4 a.m. You know, like that's his thing. I'm sorry wow. I'm giving that away. Um, that's the that's the that's secret that's the thing. time <laughs> um so i went and i asked him i was like have you ever experienced this before he was like no i've never experienced that shit like that's crazy <laughs> yeah like i've never seen him like, two like, days right before there. that i had a box in my my other room and one time i was going inside the room and the box was blocking the door like it, somebody had moved it what? yeah and i didn't think much of it i was like wait what the fuck like that didn't move it. Like there's no way, there's no other way in. Mm-hmm. And I connected the dots that maybe it was like him. Uh, and I've always felt like this energy, like oh. walking with me too. Like because when I was born, he left like maybe a few months before I was conceived. So it was almost like a transitioning. My father always talks about, it, and I felt that too. Like, wow. Yeah. So yeah, that's the one story I have with that this. That is <laughs> wild, man. Yeah, and to this day, I'm wondering, like, I wonder, like, was that a real experience? Was I in a delusional state? Like, did I, was that a real experience? But it felt real, you know? The, uh, the things that led up to it. I mean, was, he, was did he appear just like, you know, you're looking at me? Was he, was there any, like, transparency No, to him? I mean, it was kind of like a straight-faced, um, I wouldn't say melancholy, but not too even no emotion just like yeah there very almost stoic. like in the picture yes yeah, stoic yeah. Like, 
Wow. Precise word. And, yeah. and just like clear, like mm -hmm. HD, mm -hmm. like you're not human. trying to project anything on me or like scare me or, or or even invite me. Just almost like he was letting me know, like, yo, I'm here. And I'm like, yeah, I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but <sighs> even since I was a kid, I felt that's, like an energy. And yeah. my dad would like talk about him and like the transition that's of like wild. life and death between he and I. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like when you said, I was, when you said you had to go back for that second take, I was yeah. like, he wasn't there, was he? And then you're like, he was still there. I was like, oh, I'm shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, I got to go to the grocery store. Yeah, but I was quiet. It wasn't like a very visceral or like excited response it was just like oh okay i mean i was petrified inside <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i was like just there like i could i couldn't even i was so scared that i couldn't even like you know that type of stunned yeah like 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 paralyzed <laughs> kind of feeling yeah man. like when you see red and blue <laughs> <laughs> that... sadly <laughs> so sad that feeling ah uh, yeah that, man that, that like oh so how how could yeah so how could you how do you explain it now just like because you know it is your ancestry mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is you know it's not like it was some random lady named wanda who like yeah, died there yeah. like 20 years ago yeah so i can pluck some like ethereal shit out of the sky and say like put this like real esoteric meaning to it and like like Do trying it. to build a story around it yeah. but like i've always <laughs> you know like make it more than it is but like essentially i've always felt like a presence there in my life and like the way my father has talked about him and i just like what intuitively felt most logical is that it was like a guide and like even Sick. the actual like like this is him like acknowledging his presence yeah. i've always felt now I wonder if 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 you can go back to when you did see him, hmm. can you think of a uh, of, of why he could have, you know, entered your life on that day just to kind of verify and to to help show you that hey someone yeah. is helping you, maybe you're you know maybe you're going yeah. through something like man I gotta I gotta make this decision yeah. or like can I do this absolutely um now that I think about it. Um, reflecting on it, I have greater perspective. And I was really struggling with that work-life balance mm -hmm. and like also being an artist and trying to make sense of what that means for me from a financial standpoint, but still keeping like the integrity from a creative standpoint. Mm. And that's a path, bro. Yeah, it that's is. A, it is. And a path. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like I needed to see like just, I don't know if I needed to see it, but it was there. And it mm -hmm. kind of restructured and re scrambled my brain, like, yeah, to like be present to my surroundings and like start feeling in intuitively. And like, it was a slow process in that direction, but it like opened up a lot of things and it led to the point of me writing, yeah, my song My Heart Knows, which was about intuition. Like, I was projecting it, I wasn't truly following my heart at the time, but it was like a message to self. You're More starting than, that journey, mm -hmm, though, and, right? Which is what my music is most of the time. Like, I write mm -hmm. a song. Like, I wrote a song called Love the Journey, and I hadn't been, like, appreciating the steps. Like, I was like, damn, I've been through this. I had this deal, and I made this song, and I'm like, what else is there? Like, it's the fear, too. Like, I wasn't truly working as hard as I could have. Like, because you put so, you see, this, the fear, too, sometimes with success or, like, reaching a goal is, like, man, what if I work this hard, and I put all my time and energy into it, and, like, it doesn't manifest the way I envisioned it. And then it's like, well fuck mm -hmm. that like i'm growing in the process of, like putting all my energy into this thing like i'm becoming a better person like i'm realizing mm -hmm. things about myself that i didn't know like it's yeah, really challenging well. me in ways and like and that's the real goal you, you know see, like, yeah, yeah you're seeing everything you're that's what now. i need to be attached to like bec it's gonna grow me as a person you know, like yeah there's steps beyond like the artistic standpoint and yeah man she <laughs> respect bro that's <laughs> now that's the that's the truest sense because it's a it's a perfect analogy for life <laughs> not just the music path yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah like it's here now like all mm -hmm. the gifts mm -hmm. are here now if we see them we can embrace them mm -hmm. and you know uh, yeah. and feel it and like yes this is awesome yeah like 
like for example we're so in the present just having this conversation mm -hmm. that imagine how different this whole this whole thing would go if we were so dependent on mm -hmm. the outcome of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if we're thinking like who's gonna see it yeah how many yeah. people are gonna see it yeah let's promote it yeah <laughs> but you know yeah. we have this amazing opportunity to be present mm -hmm. and then at the end of the day all we're really doing is just communicating yeah. with language 100 percent. there's no like uh expense taking mm -hmm. you know there's no um energy imbalance yeah. this is like pure state mm -hmm. of just awareness and being able to G giving what you have yeah and my father has this saying like all that you've undergone is was just a clever design to mold you into who you are and i just it's just that yeah man and, that, and being present to those moments is what helps like the art of life the craft of life like mm -hmm. that's the real like <laughs> craft you know like yeah figuring yeah. yourself out within these spaces because it's life forever artist. changing and i talk so much about my dad i want to shout out my mom she's an incredible visual artist um, I have a song online called Step Into the Gray. She did all the designs for it from scratch. Um, wow. She played a major part in molding me too. I don't want to forget her. <laughs> you know, like yeah, I didn't talk about course. her enough. So I just want to make sure I enter that in there because she's going to watch it too. How yeah. come you never say anything about me? Da -da 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 -da. We'll get part <laughs> She's going to hate that too. <laughs> we'll get part two. Mama, I love you. We'll switch the backgrounds too. <laughs> so you can, be, you can be on the blue and yeah. I'll be... But I was okay. raised by two artists, and I never thought I was artistic at all. Like, my wow. mom is this incredible visual designer, like, from scratch, doing the sketches, buying the fabric, doing the measurements, sewing it on the machine herself. That's like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. And I, I was like, I, I have no talent. I'm just an athlete. I play basketball. <laughs> well, I think we are about to see some of your actual uh, music yeah. talent. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you do have some music you want to share? Yeah, let's do that, man. Cool. All right, let's hook it up. All right, man. <laughs> Na 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 yeah. Na 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 yeah. Na 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 yeah. Na 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 yeah. One time, one time. One time, one time. Every time my heart lies, things seem to unfold. Ego trips, they take my mind. That's when I unload. My heart knows, 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 my heart knows. Check, my heart's grieving, my heart's happy. Ups and downs all around kind of have me. Progressing stalls when I try to think it all. Trying to move my feet so I can walk past the thoughts. Trying to catch the weights so I can counteract the falls. I'm trying to flow free on what my mood brings. Balancing, pacing out my mood swings. Hopefully that bring my ass some good things. These palpitations don't lie, the one to keep them in. Only trust in my mind, they say the deepest sin. Holistic measures, not just for my pleasure. Knowing doing better, that's what I'm projecting. Every time my heart lies, things seem to unfold. Ego trips, they take my mind. That's when I unload. My heart knows, 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 my heart knows. Yeah, phantom the moan of the winds of desolation. Then the hurt was replaced by bitterness and disillusion. The rain falls and adjusts and adjusts alike. So I stay simmer, sad to settle for the morning's new light. Yeah, a new joy, then a new turmoil. New things in the atmosphere to reignite blood boil. If God gave me the option to leave tonight, I wouldn't hesitate, but don't discredit my love for life. Yeah, who hates a man speaking from his heart? Who wants the money, the hoes, the cars? A boy cries, has to stop when he starts. No emotions from the goal, have his soul torn apart. But I liquidly move, that's just my groove. A Pisces swimming deep for the action on the moon. I gotta plant my seeds so the actions will bloom. I'm reaching for my chest, uh, pouring this, uh. Every time my heart lies, things seem to unfold. Ego trips, they take my mind. That's when I unload. My heart knows, 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 yeah. Every time my heart lies, things seem to unfold. 
ego trips, they take my mind. That's when I unload. My heart knows, 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 my heart knows. Yeah. Na 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 yeah. Na 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 yeah. Na 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 Trust your intuition. Yeah. I'm thinking bigger, can I let it out? Uh, self-expression's looping through my music out. Uh, what about my future, can I figure out? Uh, guess I gotta wait until I leave it out. Uh, I'm thinking bigger, can I let it out? Uh, self-expression's looping through my music out. Uh, what about my future? Can I figure out? Yes, I gotta live it out, live it out. Until I live it out, live it out. Yeah. Line after line, I overindulge with my qualitative mind. My melody gotta hit the rhythm at precise time. Anything from perfection can result in downtime. But I progress, I bring collapse, I daydream, I visualize, I wonder how can I measure up to ancient sounds? I want something futuristic, but still profound. I want my stress level down as I lay this wax down. Musical masochism got me going leaps and bounds. It's my obsession. This love frequency got me all in angles. Words sound domestic for my intellectual band. Move. I bite the bullet, fluxication in my brain. Mind state reversal as I chant to break the chain. Uh, no escape from a happy self infliction. I'm feeded in, was needed in. I happy stop my kitchen with a food for thought. I'm living out of fiction, so it's real when I stop to get it. Just, just. I'm thinking bigger, can I let it out? Uh, self expressions looping through my music out. Uh, what about my future? Can I figure out? Uh, guess I gotta wait until I live it out. Uh, I'm thinking bigger, can I let it out? Uh, self expressions looping through my music out. Uh, what about my future? Can I figure out? Uh, guess I gotta wait. Picture perfect, later than my remedies. I hope these melodies achieve a potent apparatus for the savages and thieves. I'm at my ease, peace, yeah. Leveling my lows, soaping through the sky with this plane to my post now. I got projections here, obscure objections here. Living for the moment ain't the only thing suggested here. Place not myself in fear, this last and never lying. Climbing towards the highest heights, striving for the mind of Zion. I am blessed of self, cuz blessed because I am just. Living life fulfilling, Lee is more than what I want. Plus, my goals are grasping hold, rectify ancient old. Balance on the beat, counter clock without the metronome. I never guess the phone, no slacking in my presence. Ancient manuscripts come alive and rust the essence. Nothing Nothing close to curse could ever take away these blessings Cause my right hand strong, I knock these bitches back <laughs> I'm thinking bigger, can I let it out? Uh, Self-expression's looping through my music out uh, What about my future, can I figure out? Guess I gotta wait until I live it out uh, I'm thinking bigger, can I let it out? Uh, Self-expression's looping through my music out uh, What about my future, can I figure out? I wrote this song when I was 17 <laughs> Thinking bigger, can I let it out? Uh, self expressions looping through my music out. Uh, what about my future? Can I figure out? Guess I gotta wait until I live it out. Uh, I'm thinking bigger, can I let it out? Uh, self expressions looping through my music out. Uh, what about my future? Can I figure out? Guess I gotta, gotta, gotta. Yeah. Live it out. Thank you again for having me. My name is Mark Yu. That song was Live It Out. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to share. Be open. Peace and love. Ja. Rastafari. <clears throat> Yo, thank you guys for tuning in. This is my homie Mark Yu. So, Mark, tell them exactly where you can go to check your music out. Cool. 
Um, I'm on all streaming sites, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music. You can also find me on SoundCloud, um, social media, all social media is Marquee Music, Instagram, Twitter. Um, Marquee Music website is under construction, but when it's up, uh, MarqueeMusic.com. Uh, thank you again. That's it. So, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. I'm Brian Divisions. This is my boy, Mark Yu, and we're out. Peace. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Nice first one, bro. Just like that.